we tend to look at those countries as countries that we go to help rather than go to learn from and to build relationships with. I'm Bill Armstrong. I'm uh, 85, nearly 86 years of age, and uh, I have four children and 10 grandchildren. I grew up uh, on a farm in Alexandra, which is northeast of Melbourne. When I finished my course as a fitter and turner, during that time I'd become involved in an organisation called the Young Christian Workers Movement. And the Young Christian Workers Movement changed my life uh, quite dramatically. The thing that uh, attracted me to all the organisations that I work with, and that includes Indigenous organisations, uh, is building relationships with people. Because for me, I think one of the most fundamental principles of development, as we call it, uh, is uh, relationship building. I mean, there are thousands of memories that I have uh, being, uh, being with people in those countries, sitting on the beach on one occasion uh, with a group of women in India where the tsunami had wiped out all their houses and these women were fighting to keep their land so they could rebuild their houses while a European company was coming in to try and build big uh, hotels for tourists. And they were really setting themselves up to fight. At the same time, on the same beach, there were thousands of kids playing cricket on the sand. And I joined them and I bowled a few balls to them. And uh, it was fantastic because those kids really, they love their cricket. And, and it was really good to just have that chance to talk with them. My video portrait explored the life of my grandpa, along with his views and opinions on development within Australia. Similar to the exercise we did in class, I wanted to focus on the major turning point within people's lives. In this case, Pablo's turning point would be his early work with the YCW, which led him to a lack of guiding and helping international countries through development. What do you consider to be the one most successful and one most problematic aspect of your submitted work and why? Uh, so when choosing a person to interview for my video portrait, several people came to mind. I think the best aspect of my work was the person who I, who I ended up choosing. Interviews can be quite confronting. Some people have amazing stories to tell. However, they are unable to discuss them in an interesting and intriguing manner. The choice to interview my grandpa turned out amazing, not only because he has an amazing life story, working with volunteers and traveling around the world, but because of his previous experience with interviews and speeches that allowed him to answer with confidence. I think the most problematic aspect of my video portrait would be the lack of video footage showing Pablo travelling alone. Having videos would be much more impactful than the photos that I currently have with B-roll, as movement is much more eye-catching to audiences than a static image. This can be especially good when people are retelling memories, as it immerses you into the story they are telling. However, I'd like to think that I slightly overcame this with the use of sound effects to immerse the viewer into the memory that he is describing. For example, I used sound effects of women protesting in order to replicate him sitting on the beach listening to the Indian women fight against the Europeans. What is one key learning discovery you made in terms of the creative possibilities of producing interview portraits? Uh, the reading from week 10 titled Conducting Intriguing Interviews contained a ton of good tips to use when interviewing people. Before the interview, I wrote down a set of questions that I did not hand to them beforehand like the professional I am. However, I think the one key learning discovery that I probably made was the use of silence. In the reading it said, the expectant silence is the interviewer's most powerful tool for inducing the interviewee to go deeper. After completing an interview, you discover the power that silence can have. During my interview, I asked Pavel to tell some of his favourite memories from working with ABI. These questions can be quite challenging, especially if your interviewee has lived a long life. I mean, I can hardly remember what I had for breakfast today. Therefore, giving them time to think allows for an answer with more depth and detail. 
After the long, quite uncomfortable silence, Pavel was able to find a story which is quite heartwarming and takes up a large portion of my piece. Another good thing about silence is the extra footage that you receive. For me personally, this came in handy as the last four seconds of my piece required footage of him silent and contemplating his answer. What is one core lesson you learned in the production process that might be relevant to your broader development as a media practitioner? Why do you think this matters? It's quite hard to narrow down to one core lesson that I learned because I think that during the production process you end up learning more than you would think, especially as a first year media student. If I have to narrow it down though, the biggest lesson that I think would help me as a media practitioner in the future would be the use of feed feedback. I used to be quite scared of asking teachers and people for feedback, although it's something that takes two seconds and can benefit the project so much. Throughout the pre-production, I'd ask several people if the questions I prepared were suitable and if they would allow for long, detailed answers. This reassured me and meant that I was more confident when going into the interview. During the editing stage, I also showed my work to several people, Liam included. So thank you to all the people who provided me with feedback, it was very helpful. Some of the tips that I received were turning up sound and using techniques to enhance the movement of the image. The pieces of feedback that I have incorporated within my final piece are the slow zoom, as well as the zoom in and pan across on static images that I had included. Showing your work to people, especially people that fit within the audience you are aiming your product at, is extremely useful because everyone has different ideas and opinions which can be useful to apply within the final product. Receiving feedback is something which I can use throughout any of my future projects to ensure that I'm releasing a suitable and interesting product.